Yes. Yeah. Uh, Mark? Uh, anybody like to try it? Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> uh, Hello everyone. Hello. My name's Mark, the mythical best man. I do exist. <laughs> but perhaps after this speech, Chris will wish that I didn't. <laughs> perhaps, perhaps. I was going to run a sweepstake where you uh, guess the length of the best man's speech, but last time Jane did this, she won. And every, but everybody thought, when she celebrated, everybody thought she was Meg Ryan in When Harry Met Sally. <laughs> So instead, instead I'll tell you a little bit about how Mark met Chris. <laughs> Chris was born in 1976. After this, the world became a better place. The UK ended the Cod War with Iceland. Nadia Comaneci received seven perfect tens at the Olympic Games at Montreal. Steve Jobs formed the company Apple. And the UK enjoyed its hottest summer for years. I don't know how many people remember that. That was all thanks to the birth of Chris. I first met Chris in the mid-90s, when he started to work with me at Oak House in Swindon. I was amazed that this young guy, so far away from home, could be so confident and enthusiastic. We were also privileged to meet his two beautiful daughters, Alexandra and Holly. And I have the great honour to be Holly's godfather. Soon after Chris started to work at Oak House, uh, it closed down. <laughs> <laughs> and we were given the opportunity to relocate to Bristol. Because we both lived in Swindon, we decided to car share. Chris was very excited when I picked him up one day because his lovely mama, Dorina, had come over to visit. He got into my car and wound down the window it was the 90s, and, and continued chatting to his mum, shouting, Lara Badere, as we drove off. He then started talking to me, and it wasn't until we got to Junction 17 that I realised he was still talking to me in Romania. <laughs> I'm sure you all know that Chris has a very caring nature. When he's had a couple of drinks, he becomes even more caring. <laughs> And he's not shy in expressing his love to all around him. <laughs> Even food trolleys. <laughs> Make sure the staff have moved all the food trolleys to me. <laughs> At the end of a night out in Bristol, Chris patiently listened as a taxi driver poured out his heart to him. Chris's advice was to keep talking. My advice was, stop talking and get out the car, the meter's still running and the chains are about to leave. <laughs> So, Chris first told me about his new love, Jane, when we were in the shower together. <laughs> at, at Cross Sports Centre, after the game of squash. Picture the scene. <laughs> Standing there, with his towel draped over his arm. He said to me, Mark, I have something to tell you. <laughs> I, I feared the worst. <laughs> Thankfully, he didn't profess his undying love for me, but he told me of a beautiful lady he'd met in some hospital. Again, I feared the worst. <laughs> but I needn't have worried, as Tracy and I soon met Jane, and discovered her gift of hospitality and her delicious cooking for the first time. A nine-year-old Beth even designed the menu for us. We have enjoyed many meals since then and getting to know her family too. We now know Tom so well, we've actually adopted him. We have also been fortunate to get to know Chris's family too. A number of us went over to Romania last month and enjoyed a great time with his family and friends. We were met at the airport by our trusty tour guide Coco, who came skeeping towards us. <laughs> <laughs> Having survived a trip to Dracula's castle and a minor traffic accident, we were treated to Ollie's legendary barbecue and Marin's even more legendary speaker, which I'm assured you should drink on peak, on peak. <laughs> 
being friends with Chris and Jay has been great. Because Tracy and I have been introduced to things we wouldn't normally know about. <laughs> <laughs> New cultures and languages. But we didn't think we'd be introduced to the world of adult books. <laughs> on Christmas Eve, and a bit of a panic. <laughs> Jane said she didn't want anything for Christmas, but he discovered that she had bought something for him. Chris, when a woman says she doesn't want anything, you're not supposed to take that literally. Anyway, back to the story. Chris said, you work in Bristol City Centre, can you get something from me? <laughs> no problem, I said. <laughs> what is it? He then proceeded to tell me about a certain book that Jane had asked for that would benefit her patients. <laughs> I won't tell you what the, the title was, but I'm sure Jane will lend it to you if you ask. <laughs> so off, off I went to Waterstones, hoping that the said book was not in stock. <laughs> Unfortunately, it was. <laughs> so I looked around for two other books to sandwich the book between. <laughs> I, I then joined the long queue. <laughs> there were about six people serving, one of whom was a young teenage girl. <laughs> otherwise known as cashier number six. <laughs> I, I began to try and work out which server I would get. I pretended to shove tie my shoelaces just so I wouldn't be served by her. But no matter what I did, fate was going to intervene. I got to the front of the queue and I heard the dreaded words, Cashier number six! <laughs> I sheepishly handed over the books to the young girl, who dutifully scanned in the first one. Then the second one. Skipping a beat, she held it up in the air and shouted, Authorization for an adult book, please! <laughs> never, never again. <laughs> so I guess I should offer Chris some advice about marriage. <laughs> After being married more than 22 years, I know that marriage is not just a word, it's a sentence. <laughs> <laughs> no, but seriously. Honestly, seriously. The fact that there are so many people here today to celebrate your marriage is testament to your generous friendship and your unfailing enthusiasm for everything that you do. I'm sure everyone here would want to join me in saying that we love you both very much and wish you every happiness for your married life together. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you Jane and Chris, the bride and groom. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah.